Hello people, welcome to another game of Dota 2. You're watching Starlight Star Series Season 8, Day 17, Game 3 of 6. And I'm joined by two people. More numbers, yay. Two people are, of course, our Statsman. Nahas is inside the game to provide you with all the inside information that you ever wanted to know and has hopefully also some nice trivias for you. And then, of course, the person that you will hear next to me, it is Mot. Welcome back. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. Of course, we've witnessed some good games already. Both these teams played today. Both of them playing very well here. We'll see what they want to go for bans and picks. Uh, a couple of interesting picks so far. Of course, we saw Enigma for Puppy earlier on. Uh, you know, Virtus Pro had some great picks as well. And none of them are really coming to the top of my head, sadly. I think they had the Alchemist of support as well, which did really well, which is banned out. Not a surprise ban there, as Alchemist has seen a lot of play recently, and for good reason. It's a very strong hero. Uh, Navi does need to get some wins going for them, really, to have a good chance to get to the playoff stages, of course, of Star Ladder. They, they've done okay, but they need to do a bit better here, as they have, you know, a little bit of an uphill battle going up against Virtus Pro. That's a very strong team. Virtus Pro, their new lineup, definitely with some strong players on it. We'll see how they can play up against Team Navi, one of the juggernauts, of course, of the Star Ladder. It's going to be a good, uh, good game here. It is for sure. So far for Navi, they have played seven games in total, that is including the game today. Four wins, three losses. They are sitting at number 11 in the rankings, so it's not really that great just yet, but they also only have played seven games, so they can still have, uh, or they still have the chance to rise to the top, because the top also has got three losses, but uh, the top also has got Virtus Pro in it, with four losses, 12 games played, eight wins, looking indeed pretty solid, hoping that they don't lose any more games, because uh, right now they're comfortable, but I mean, Navi has only played seven games, Fnatic has only played five games, Sigma only played seven games, and those ki are the kind of teams that we would normally expect to do really well and expect to sit very high up there in the rankings, so we'll see. Only four teams to make it to uh, to the playoffs, and I'm, I'm like, on Sunday, I believe, we had a game of Virtus Pro where Arsar played the Enigma. And he had some really, really amazing plays, also with Black Holes. I'm just hoping that we're going to see another Enigma. I don't care on which side. I just want another one. Yeah, Black Holes are fun to watch. I don't care who plays it. I, as long as you hit Black Holes and as long as you're a better Enigma player than I am, then please definitely pick that hero up. I honestly would have seen, like, I just enjoy big team fight heroes, which, to be honest, we haven't seen a whole lot of here in Starlight. Like, we've seen very few Magnuses, very few uh, Tide Hunters, so, like, Ravages have been few and far between. And that's kind of, like, strange considering how gank oriented and, and fighting oriented Dota is right now. I feel like you, we could see teams benefit from having really early team fights. It just hasn't been happening. Crystal Maiden has been somebody that really does a lot of work with her freezing field, and that's not surprising either because of how good of a hero she is. Visage is going to come out from Navi. Uh, it's probably going to be Kuroki who plays that hero. He plays it a lot. So does Puppy, I think, from time to time. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a, it's a strong hero. You have Visage from there to do work with, so a good first pick, but I don't think really necessary to be first picked as well because I don't know if it would have gotten banned out, but you know, it's nice to pick up. I agree, I agree for sure. I may, I might even just say, you know, maybe Crystal Main would have been a better pick if you are going to pick up a support first pick. But uh, now they pick up a support that has, of course, a great nuke, but no disable. And that's something that I'm normally a bit sketchy about, like, you don't know how the rest of the draft is going to go yet, or at least, uh, you know, maybe they do. But I'm going to assume that they don't. And, you know, you already have locked yourself in with a support without a disable until he's level 6, in which case familiar stuns are, are a thing, but... I don't know, it's not as strong as, as I would Ten seconds remaining. want to see as a first pick. We're going to see Nature's Prophet picked up by uh, Virtus Pro, though. Five They're going to go with uh, with Line of Heaven, Nature's Prophet. Most likely means no Shackles, sorry, no Wind Ranger, Light of Heaven, unfortunately. And Nafi, I ha like, how long does it take for them to think about their draft? They are already down to 20 seconds in their bonus time. Well, down. that's what they were thinking about. They were thinking, is this going to get banned? Is Virtus Pro going to be stern enough to ban this hero to make sure that we don't get it? Or are they going to pick it up for Illidan like they did in the first game? Do we want to pick it now? And it's Luna's such a good hero that I don't buy. I don't mind this pickup at all. I don't mind them picking Luna second because they've got their carry now. The thing is, though, Virtus Pro can counter them with whatever they want. They already have the Nature's Prophet, which is kind of a counter in and of itself because it can split push very effectively. Um, so Luna's a big pickup for them. You can see the life Now Navi's just going to ban carries now for the most part. They ban Puppies, Enigma, Virtus Pro will. So that's actually kind of a smart ban as well. This is just a hero though, and I want to talk about this a little bit, that has a higher skill cap than Crystal Maine does with those True. microing of the birds. 
Like, that can change the complexion of the game so quickly, especially if you're in an Aghanim Scepter. Crystal Maid can't really have that impact in the game. She can really either do well early or not do anything at all. And, like, that's the thing. It's like, Visage can have a good start and carry it into the late game with Visage birds and, of course, the stuns and setting up ganks. Crystal Maid can only do that so much. So, with Na'vi, I think that's why they pick up... They, they rely on Visage a little bit more than they would rely on the Crystal Maid because it does have that higher skill cap. So... That's why they pick up that hero. Doom's going to get banned out as well. And one more band to go before we get our last couple of picks in. Yeah, we still have a hero in the pool that uh, we saw earlier today, a Timber Saw. Um, I'm not really, like, I'm... Five seconds remaining. I'm not really sure what Navi wants to put in the mid lane. I'm hoping it's going to be one of those aggressive heroes that is not a puck. Please give us some, something like a pick. Storm. It, actually, it is a counter to the Nature's Prophet, so why not? Uh, they still ban out the Chen. Enchantress is still in the pool, though, so they could still, and Navi could still pick up that. But, I mean, again, by picking up an Enchantress, they will have maybe a Disable if Enchantress picks up a good creep, but they don't really have a solid stun. And I find that lacking. Of course, there's a mini stun from the Lucent Beam, and there's the Familiars, as I already Ten mentioned. But I'm, and like, that's the one thing that I'm looking for in Navi's lineup right now. How are they getting that Five control up on the game? Because otherwise, I would also say, like, with Aluna there again, I wouldn't mind seeing another, sh another Shadow Demon. Especially not for that pushing power with creating more illusions of the Luna. That's... That's great. But, I mean, again, the Shadow Demon is not one that gives a good stun. That, I mean, that the Demonic Purge in the previous game did work wonders for them though so perhaps they're going to be just happy with the mini stuns and the familiars and maybe still want to have the shadow demon i'm not sure honestly like i usually make a big deal about disables and having them in a game but in this scenario when you're facing crystal man who's very slow nature prophet who's not the fastest guy in the world either i don't know if i value stuns as highly as right now obviously the draft is still underway but if they wanted to get something for that that has a really good lockdown, uh, good disable, good initiation as well, I feel like Dragonite, because it kind of fits their lineup too. You look at Luna and Visage, those two are pushing heroes to a certain extent, and they want pushing heroes up against the Nature's Prophet, make his life difficult. So go for a Dragonite, get Elder Dragon form, which is, I mean, that's a good hero. It's not played that much, surprisingly enough. Speaking of disables, they have Ogre Magi now, and this is... This is a good team. This is a good comp for Virtus Pro, despite having to skill cast, you can call it, for Ogre Mag Magi. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do with this hero, so I'm excited. I, I have to say, um, first of all, I'm surprised to see the hero at all. And second, if you are going to pick up that hero, why so early? Because, I mean, uh, I it's know. like, it's not going to get banned. There's Ten no chance of that. Remaining. There's just no right. chance. And by picking up an Ogre Magi here, they're, they're giving away quite a bit about their lineup. But Ogre Magi, I, I like him most if he's combined up with something like a, I'm like still a lone druid, perhaps. Gyrocopter, perhaps, but just something that, like Bloodlust. I find that the most important thing on an Ogre Magi at the moment. The Bloodlust is going to make a difference. We do still have an Enchantress picked up by Navi, so they will still have that one for Puppy with the um, lack of disables, I said. But, like, well, they probably are going to be happy with, uh, with that anyways. Hoping that Enchantress picks up the right creeps and help in the mid helps in the mid lane, of course, as well. That's the biggest thing right now, I feel, for, for the Enchantress. She's Ten just able to get remaining. that middle lane going the way of Dendi, regardless of what hero he's facing. Five seconds yeah, that's kind of the point. I mean, just be able to just throw up the Wildkin War Chief's Tornado or whatever, really, just to annoy people, essentially, like the like you mentioned, the Harpy Stormcrafter. The Ogre Magi, like you mentioned, yeah, if you're going for the stun, then you go for a hero like Eventual Spirit who has Magic Missile. You don't go Ogre Magi for the stun, you go for a Bloodlust and Multicast as well. So, uh, Bloodlust is a huge tool later on in the game. It helps so much. And you mentioned a couple heroes. You mentioned Lone Druid specifically that it really helps out on. It could have helped the Nature's Prophet to a certain extent if he's right-clicking, which generally isn't happening a lot of the time. He's more so playing that split push oriented game with a Necro Book. They're going to go for Weaver, however, and that's a hero that works just as well with the Ogre Magi. And this is kind of a gross lineup for British Pro because they've got Weaver damage and the Ogre Magi and Crystal Maiden locked down as well. So damage is really... It's there. Plus, they can have the Nature's Prophet TP in whenever they want. And it's, so ganking is going to be very effective, I think, for British Pro. They have two roaming gankers, plus the Nature's Prophet to TP in. So they have a lot of really game damage. And Navi knows this, so they go for a Bounty Hunter, who's a little bit more slippery and tougher to deal with. Plus, he really, if they send the Nature's Prophet in the jungle, which they probably won't, they can just roam and just have Bounty Hunter take care of the Nature's Prophet very easily. But Nature's Prophet should probably be in the offlane or something along those lines. So good picks coming out from both sides. Yeah, I have Ten to say, I find that 
Ogre Magi Weaver Crystal Maiden, a trial line like that, might be Five easily punishable. Remaining. But because of the enchantments already picked up, the, the, the amount of, or the possibility for perhaps the trial line for Navi is just so much diminished that... It's, it's a shame, because I think an aggressive trial line against the, the trial line of Verge Pro would have worked out great. Uh, there is still going to be a ban out for Queen of Pain. Would be a nice one with one of those aggressive heroes that I uh, that I hinted towards. But Verge Pro, they don't want to have to deal with that nuke. Of course, uh, that nuke would be able to take down Weaver before he can time lapse. Something like that is going to be uh, a big deal right there. I wouldn't mind Ten seeing a Storm Spirit remaining. still, especially since not only is he a counter to that Nature's Prophet, which I mentioned earlier, but also he remaining. normally wants to have an Orchid. And Orchid is going to be the way to deal with the Weaver, so a silence of some sort or a, a solid Night lockdown would be a Night Stalker. I would love that. And the first pick, I mean, for for mid, because so far Virtus Pro doesn't have a mid just yet. First mid pick is going to go the way of Virtus Pro. So Navi, they, they've got their, like, they, they have the upside here. They can select a hero based on whatever Virtus Pro is going to pick up. I'm hoping it's going to be a Night Stalker, because that would be perfect against that Weaver. Yeah, that's, like... You want something with the silence. Night Stalker has that in spades. You, you think about Doom, that's the reason why they pick up a Doom is uh, obviously against Weaver or something like, something that can cast spells or that you just want to, you know, be able to deal with effectively. And Night Stalker fits that description. Plus Void is really great chasing utensil against these heroes like an Ogre Magic, Nature Drop, and Crystal Maiden, all very slow heroes that get away not that easy except for TP. But that's a good, that's a good pickup to make everything a little bit safer to have that mobility. So like they... I was mentioning how you don't need lockdown earlier. This is what you need lockdown for, the Storm Spirit. And now even more so, do you want to go Night Stalker? Do you want to go something that silences? So they're kind of forced into something Death like that. Prophet. Doom's not available. Death Prophet will work as well, but it's a little bit harder to hit, and the silence doesn't last as long. True. Um, it's also good for pushing. I mean, I guess if Navi wants to go that route, but I don't think they value that hero that highly because, to be honest, that hero does get seconds. kind of... Destroyed in lane. Storm Spirit can do work against it. However, I feel like Death Prophet does okay against the Storm Spirit early on. So maybe you can go for that route. Still, I think I'd rather... I, either of those two heroes might not be picked up. Puck is still available, so we very well could see them go that route as well. Or something a little bit unorthodox for Dendi. Seconds, right? It is going to be Puck. Yeah, so I mean, they go for the safe choice. And, yeah. you know, that's the silence. That's the silence, that's the lockdown, and that's the initiation coming out too. So it's like that's the... The trifecta that Dendi really wanted there. You could go for the Night Soccer, a hero maybe he's not too comfortable with. You could go for the Death Prophet, another hero he's not too comfortable with, or you can go for Puck, which is like one of his heroes. So yeah, I guess it's it is a safe yeah, choice. I understand it. It's just you know, I would have really liked seeing a Night Stalker played by Dendi. I don't think I've seen that uh, for uh, quite a long time. But uh, but let's see who's playing what. As we do have everybody of Navi so far rotating towards the top lane. Dendi, he'll be going on the mid lane. Picked himself up a Notalisman, of course, playing his Puck puppy on one of his signature heroes it is the enchantress for him already has himself an early smoke so we might see him with an early rotation Vost once again playing the Luna will be on the safe lane farming away and he'll be supported by Kuroki's visage will also be on the top lane trying to stack and pool and I guess with the dual lane there he is gonna try to get his level 6 as fast as possible that's an upside for uh, for Navi they really have the chance to get that level 6 up for those uh, supports. Funnick will be on the bottom lane he'll play the bounty hunter and he'll be by himself as uh, it looks like Illidan doesn't get scouted out here by Navi, but we'll see if they can. Yeah, there's some there. aggression coming out from both teams right now. They just wanted to make sure that they have control of their jungles and try to throw a war down, but that's not going to happen. On the side of Virtus Pro, you're going to see in the top lane, Illidan will be on that Weaver. He's in a very effective carry so far. Jotham's going to be helping him on that Ogre Magi. Uh, also here in the top lane, Arsar will be on the Crystal Maiden once more. In the mid lane matchup, you'll have, of course, God or G will be on that Storm Spirit going up against Dendi mid, which we talked about already. And to round it all out, in the solo safe lane, it is going to be Light of Heaven on that Nature's Prophet. So, you know, Bounty Hunter's going to do okay down here. Now that he's not going up against a defensive try lane, he'll be okay. He's actually got double damage, and he might look for a kill early on. You can see he's roaming already. He'll Shadow Walk if necessary, and he can do some damage. No, he's just going to throw a ward up real quick and then leave. So, dual lane versus an aggro try lane coming out for Virtus Pro. They can roam in the Enchantress at any time, and they'll have to because Havos isn't going to be able to get as much farm as he'd like, and this is going to be tough for him. They might need to switch lanes around, or at least just bring in Puppy full time, and that's going to be tough because yeah. he won't be able to get the farm that he wants. On the, on the bright side, if Navi is able to win against aggressive trial lane, they'll have a bounty hunter that is decently farmed, because as you said, he'll be doing okay bottom. And they'll be having a weaver that doesn't do that much just yet. So if you, Because if you shut down a weaver, he's having a tough time normally to catch up, unless there is some hero that is really out of control, which is a storm spirit definitely could be. Of course, that's our main lane right there. It could also be 
the uh, decision maker here of this game. If Dendi wins very hard against that storm, or if G wins very hard against that puck, then maybe that's going to be the decision maker. But I think like if Navi is going to be okay here against this aggressive trailing, they're going to be doing good across the entire game. There's a lot of pressure, I think, for Verge Pro to shut down Navos. Yeah, and that's why they brought this land up here, because they know what Havos can do, and he's still doing okay as of right now, but the moment that he steps outside of that tower range, they're probably going to die from him, or at least just try to go on him. The good thing is Puppy smoked up, and this is exactly what they needed to do, bring him in for a gank and look for a kill, and they definitely can. Not in the Weaver, necessarily, but on one of the supports, and that's who they'll want to go on. They'll ping, they're pinging on Jotam, but he's just going to back off, and Illidan's just going to try to last hit. They know something's amok here, they have a Sentry Ward, obviously they didn't scout anything out, but still... This is going to be a tough scenario for... Oh, they're going to go anyways. Yeah, looks like. they're going to go anyway. They're already slowing down the Ogre Magi. Nice frostbite for the Centaur, but I don't think it matters. Boom! Soul Assumption in your face. That's going to be Kuroki with the first blood going away of his visage. And Puppy, his Centaur. I mean, it was a very low duration anyway, so it was going to die regardless. A very good that they had two creeps. One to back up the other, but... Uh, well, good start for sure for Navi. They needed that. Yeah, that's textbook right there, that kill that they got. Habos is getting a little bit of Shikuchi damage, but it doesn't matter. I mean, like, that's exactly what they needed to do. Come in, enchant, throw out your Lucent Beam, do some right-click damage as well, throw up the right-clicks. Kuroki throws up his Soul Assumption to grab the kill. Easy. Done. Because they also hit the Hellbear Smash, and that's yeah. huge, the Thunderclap. Like, that does so much damage. You saw Jalen, like, drop to half health because of that, and it's because it's so early on. He's got no real life pool, so... A big gank, but Havos still won't have room to farm. They're going to keep being aggressive up here. The question is, will Puppy roam back in again? And he has to at some point. And they did counter this ward that uh, Virtus Pro did have, which means he's going to come in unchecked for the most part. You know, you're circling it now. That's exactly where it was. And that's a smart play for them. So Puppy has room to farm now, also can roam in whenever he wants. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm very... Like, that Navi knew that that, that ward was there is just... It, it was, the reaction with Virtus Pro was noticeable, but I mean, of course we're noticing it because we know that they have a ward there and we see that they are kind of just a little bit more careful, but Navi rightfully so finding the ward in there anyway. In the meantime for G in the middle lane, it's 16 to 3 in terms of last hits. Dendi is sitting on fi or 13 to 5, so slightly behind. I think the biggest difference between these two right now is uh, who gets level 6 first. Because the person that gets level 6 for first is going to be able to make something happen. Is either going to be able to rotate to get a kill or maybe even get a kill upon uh, his opponent here in his middle lane. But that level 6 is going to make the difference. So far it is actually Dendi that is slightly ahead. 6 denies on his side while G is sitting on 3 denies. He might be having more last hits but with the more denies going the way of Dendi I feel like Dendi has got a slight edge over him. Yeah just a little bit with those denies like you mentioned and the level 6 will be a big deal. I think it's a bigger deal for G than it is for Dendi, even though Dream Quo is a big difference. He's getting pulled in right now, though. He might be able to jaunt out. Oh, just in time, man. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that empty bottle for him. The rune is on the bottom lane. will be taken by the Bounty Hunter. And actually, Phonic, he's going to find G right here. Uh, just harassing him, though. He doesn't. I don't think he can kill him, but he is wasting his time. And that's going to be worth it as uh, worth something as well. Oh, actually, with the Shuriken Toss coming out, another Overload. Funnick with a haste rune. In comes Lot of Heaven. He'll have a Sprout. That's going to be saving the day, unless he can eat himself through this. No, he's not going to try. He wants to save it. He's still chasing, though. He's still going for this. This is, by the way, regardless of if he's going to get the kill or not, which he seems to be really wanting to have, and he might actually be able to do it. Funny gets locked inside. He will lose his own life for this, but that's a worthy trade. That is the mid lane because of Funny won by Denny. Just by that one. Even yeah. if he didn't get the kill, that chase right. would have been enough already, but that was insane. Yeah, it really was. That's a huge, huge pickup for Funic. He gets the kill, he trades his life to an extra profit. Yes, that's not necessarily the best, but what is the best is Denny gets so much room to farm. He's now leading in last hits. He's getting the experience from these creeps. He's level 6 now. G, I think, should still be level 5. Yeah, he is. In top lane, it looks like there might be some action here. Yeah, they're going to go for Kuroki, and they just profit ultimate, still bouncing around. And getting the kill in the end, it is going to be the Storm Spirit that goes down here as well. It was no track kill just yet, I believe, but Funnig now is level 6, so that is going to be one for one. And I mean, across the map, I'm still favoring Navi in this because, of course, the Vost is still alive. I'm saying alive because he's not really farming all too well. Illidan, he is doing okay. He's 25 to 9 while Vost is sitting on 10 to 2, so that's a big difference right there. But as long as the Vost is still alive, I haven't lost hope yet for this top Radiant's lane from Navi. Yeah, I mean, he's not farming effectively, but he's still at least getting experience, which is nice. Tracks up on Light of Heaven. He's not really concerned, it looks like. He does take that Shuriken Toss, which is level 3. He's getting chased around. Bottle is going. Light of Heaven trying to salve up here. Can he make it away? Shuriken Toss in 1. That's full damage. If he gets that Shuriken, oh, the Sprout. Ah, oh, the Kill for Phronic will be there. 
That's a huge pickup, a track kill as well. Phonic is now firing in all cylinders. He's doing really well. Yeah, in the meantime, on the top lane, there's going to be a bit of a skirmish as well. This time, it is going to be Luna that dies, but at least Kuroki was able to take down the Crystal Main with him. In the meantime, Storm is also in some trouble because rotation of Na'Vi is, is just in full throttle right now. They take down G as well. I mean, they might have lost to Vost, but they get three heroes across the map, two of which were solo lanes. Then the, I think it's time for him to rotate top to make sure that uh, Ilvin is going to be uh, looking at a bit of a difficult time. And I mean, because he is tri-laning, he is still level five. That's the biggest thing here for Verge Pro. They might have been getting kills here, that's all nice, but he needs to have those levels going for him. That is something that of course Luna is not getting either, but he is going to be here on the on the top lane for a while to farm, so he's not too sad about that. While Illidan, he needs to be having his mobility, and he he is right now the prime target for Navi to take down. And you kind of want to have that um, the time lapse if you're if you know that the bounty is on your head and that's no pun intended towards the bounty hunter. Oh, Vortex up and Denny here on the mid lane. Arthur comes in as well, but it doesn't matter. Denny's already jumped himself away towards his orb. In comes Puppy helping out as well. Dream Coil still comes out upon G. Silenced up, tracked up. That's gonna be a kill going the way of fun. A killing spree for him with that level four Shuriken toss right now. He might be out of mana, but I I like this build. I do. Yeah, the Shuriken Toss has been really effective. The, you want to be able to gank effectively, and Shuriken Toss is one of the builds that allows you to do that. And God has had a rough time. G has gone down so often. He's barely level 6 right now. He he just got it with the last creep wave. He's got no farm in comparison. Dendi really has gotten this land one for him by not only Funic, but Puppy as well roaming on through. The problem is they do need to fight him, uh, farm for a boast, and he's getting that down bottom now. He's starting to get some last hits. He's still a little bit far behind. He's only at 22 last hits right now, but he doesn't care about that because if he can get levels, if he can get of course, the last hits he can do fine, but he might die. Yeah, he has got an Eclipse, so might be pumping it out. Oh my god, he gets a kill. Maybe Light of Heaven. Yeah, you still get some, but he'll get tracked up, and then he will jump forward. The Shuriken Toss will get the kill. That's two for one, and even though Luna died, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sad about that. Luna was still there for the kill upon G, so he still gets the experience for that. Might not have gotten the last hit, but it's... It could be worse than the meantime, Illidan is chasing down Kuroki. The slow is going to be there, still under the tower. Illidan does have a time lapse, he's not going to use it just yet. Just uh, lets himself get harassed a bit. And Kuroki, by the way, is level 7 right now, so him being left alone here on the top lane has paid off as well as we do have Funic again with the rotation. This time he finds a level 4 Crystal Maiden. Well, if that's not going to be, be a kill, then I don't know what is. Mega kill streak for this bounty hunter, and this. Is the main problem of Virtus, for Virtus Pro, I think, at the moment. Not Dendi that is doing very well, that is close to his blink deck already. Not have a, not a Vos that is getting some farm right now, but it's this Funic Bounty Hunter that is 6-1-0. All the kills went his way, actually, the ones that he's been involved in. And a lot of those have been already track kills. Yeah, those are huge kills for him, and Funix just playing out of his mind. They're gonna go for G again. Oh my gosh, G is so sad. G's died like every minute. Mm -hmm. Literally, he's died so many times right now. You look at his deaths, he's got six deaths to his name. However, Light of Heaven will grab a kill on Havos. That's a big pickup for them. They get him one more time. Minus is being built for the Nature's Prophet as they're working on this bottom tier one tower. As well, has rotated down there, but they're just feeding kills to Na'Vi. I mean, they're feeding track kills, especially, which is a real big problem. I mean, Bounty Hunter is getting fat, which is always not a good sign. You never really like to see a Bounty Hunter get fat in any game that you're playing up against. And Dendi is starting to get some farm himself. His Blink Dagger is done. He'll TP bottom, and now is the time for Na'Vi to fight, except for Ghost who needs farm, so... Yeah, we'll see. The silence is up there. <laughs> Funic didn't even have time to go for the track that time. Didn't have mana for it either, but I mean, that is that was the first time that the Weaver died. And because Dendi was able to get in there with his Blink Dagger and just silence up that Weaver, no time lapse possible, and the nukes coming out of Funic. It is, at this moment, I mean, you already mentioned it, you can't trade kills if there's a Bounty Hunter on the map. And right now, I'm just, you know, Virtus Pro, they have to rethink what they're doing right now. They have to keep that G safe because Weaver by himself won't be able to carry this. He needs the help of and Light of Heaven and G. And right now, it's, it's just not going to happen just yet. And we might see actually uh, a Vost getting something more here on the top lane. He has got his Eclipse up. If they just see Illidan, then they might be able to go for it. But um, now it looks like he'll be kept safe. Three versus three here on the top lane once again. But the tower will live. For now. Oh, Funic. Hello, Funic. Let's track up. Shuriken Toss? No, the sun comes out. There is a uh, time lapse, but Illidan, I'm not sure why he didn't use it, because now he's very low. G actually jumping himself in or teleporting himself in. He can jump himself in. 
Funnick. She can't fight. He's got nothing in his bank. He really can't do anything here. I mean, he's got less farm than Avos does, so if he fights, they'll lose. I feel like this is not the engagement for Virtus Pro, unless they're fighting under their tower. They just don't have enough damage. No. Uh, Illidan has to time lapse, actually, so. Yeah. Let's see if they're gonna do it again. Sentry Ward gets placed, so they will now see if Funnick moves forward. Uh, it's, it, it's, it looks to be a four versus five, four versus four fight though, and I w I would actually put my money right now upon uh, upon Navi purely because of Funic and because they have the Eclipse still up as well. I guess that. Well, what helps. I forget, so what we I, I neglected to say also was that in light of having TP at any time, and he's got Phase Blitz, so he can't do damage. Plus, he's got Nature's Wrath, so uh, the Otis is on Navi to make sure they don't do anything too crazy here. They have to wait for uh, Dendi to get here. They'll try to take this tower, but it's just not going to happen. The fight's uh, going to break out. Let's see if it's going to be enough. If Ose is going to be the first target, he's already picked up. G, though, tracked up, killed off Kuroki. He'll be trying to get himself out of there, but Illidan might be looking to pick him off. Might be successful in that as well, but Illidan now, he'll go down before anything else. It's three for one. In comes G again, he bought back, looks to still take down Kuroki, he's able to do that, but now he's out of mana, he's running for his life, Dendi jumping forward, the bottle charges up on G, might be enough to jump himself towards the high ground, indeed it is. In comes the familiars though, Kuroki is looking for revenge with his birds, it might be enough. Puppy coming in, he's out of mana completely as well, he's got one impetus, it is enough to take the kill, that means that the only one that didn't die that fight was Jotam on his Ogre Magi, and in the I mean, that was a bought back Storm Spirit, that died again, and all they gave away yep. was a kill upon a Vos, which at the moment, you know what, he's died so many times, it doesn't really matter that he died one more time, and a support. Well, so many times is a relative term. I mean, <laughs> four deaths compared to eight deaths of G. Yeah. Like, that's rough. And that was, they did defend the tier one tower, I'll give them that, but Dendi came on the backside, making sure no one else can get initiated on. Uh, on Navi, the impetus damage was doing so much work for him for Puppy as well as his nature attendance really helped out a lot. Um, I, I'm sure a couple of those kills were track kills, although they did yeah. lose Havos early on and they keep losing Havos early on. He's not really the pivotal focus so far in this game like he was in the last game. He'll get farm and he'll start being a big factor if this game goes long enough, which it should, but they're not too concerned about getting him farm because he'll get there. You know, Ilden is, is still also not too far ahead in terms of his own farm. I mean, you look at the net worth right now, he's still at 3,800. He's only one person ahead. Like, you look at the, the net worth chart, they're relatively close. Yeah. So, they're this both game the is still one anybody's game. But... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, so far on Set of Earth Pro, it's, it's going to be uh, a Light of Heaven that is highest on farm, but that's because of his Hand of Midas. And, of course, part of that net worth is, is in the Hand of Midas, which is effectively not doing as much as you might uh, be able to do with the. Uh, other items with the amount of farm. Let's take a look as if Dendi is gonna find someone or all the way around. They are gonna be able to kill him off. Multicast! Skillful. We do still have Funnick around, but there's a sentry ward there, so he's not safe. If he can find someone, they know he's there. The pings go off. They go for him. They show that he is that he is seen. In comes a stun. The ignite as well, slowing him down. Gets sprouted up. He can go invisible again, but it might not be enough. Maybe it is enough. Yes, it should be enough. They see him still. The ward. It's enough. They take him down. That's 2 0. Can they take down more? G can still jump himself in for a vortex. Might be looking for a Vost, but there's a tier 1 tower that he doesn't want to die if he doesn't want to overextend because they just got themselves finally a good fight where G did not die, which is always nice. And they don't want to be giving anything away right here. Yeah, this is this is a tough defense for them. Actually, they're gonna have to fortify, and, and it's a very good pickup for Virtus Pro. That's exactly what they needed. They need a lot more of that. However, they got Dendi, who's already pretty farmed, so getting a kill on him is very nice. And then getting a kill on Funic is huge. So he can't be involved in fights. He can't track up, as you can see. He's also got a perseverance already on the bounty hunter. I'm not sure what he's building. Maybe a Lincoln Sphere. I'm not 100% though on that one. I mean, he's got a couple of options. I hope it's not a Battle Fury. I really do. Yeah, I don't know, actually. I think a Lincoln yeah. Sphere, because against the pole, against uh, yeah, the Frog Blast, and against the Float. But yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't mind that. But. Battle Fury would be a bit... I mean, he can go rotate into a bit of a hard carry. Like, if, if they're feeling like Vos is not going to cut it and they feel like the game is shorter than it otherwise would, because, I mean, maybe with the Hand of Midas up on Age's Prophet, they feel like they're slightly pressured, then maybe it is a good idea. But I normally am not a fan of the Bounty Hunter going for something like that. I'm a fan of Bounty Hunter Aura Master. Oh, yeah, I like that gee. as well. Tries to jump himself away. He didn't get silenced. He teleports out, out of mana, but teleporting successful. 
And that's going to be enough. Yeah, there's In the no meantime, the tier 1 tower should be taken down. Or, well, it's just supports, I guess. Tier 1 tower top will get taken down, though. Dyer's Light of Heaven with the gold. But it doesn't matter if Roshan gets taken down by Navi in return for that. That would be a good trade for Navi. <laughs> and that, that, right there, that set should tell you everything, people. Like, I'm sure that's with a ridiculous lead, unless that pro Dota team ended up losing, which is probably what should happen. Bat like, Battle Fury, people Dyer's say they get it for stats, they get it for mana regeneration. Don't, n just, unless you're Funic, don't build it, please. It's like throwing that out there. Yeah, it's not on recommended items, uh... It's, 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 it's like, it's, it's a trick item on the recommended items. Like, you shouldn't build it. There's always one item that's on there that you shouldn't build, and this is the one for Bounty Hunter. Sorted. <laughs> yeah, I don't into know. False play. Well, we'll see. It is a uh, one tier one tower left standing for Navi so far. I mean, they have got quite a few fights going their way, of course, but so far they've only been able to take the tier one mid tower in return for it. Tier one bottom as well as top are still standing and actually standing quite strong as well. A lot stronger than a tier one mid for themselves, anyway. Mm -hmm. I feel like they should be trying to... Well, I, maybe they are not in a rush. Maybe they feel like they got the better late game anyway with the Luna getting bigger and bigger. But I, I wouldn't be convinced about that because there is so much potential for split push on Virtus Pro that if I was Navi, I would, would be slightly worried. But perhaps 25 minute mark is the mark they want to do something. Or maybe before the Aegis disappears, if this Luna gets himself uh, herself drums or something like that. The drums are already up on the Bounty Hunter, but it's never, it's never too bad to get two sets of drums. Yeah. I mean, they have the mech now, so I, I would say maybe farm your next item, but I think that mech is really where, you know, now they're going to start pushing. You can yeah. see there's four men at the top, and I think they're going to try to push here. They're going to commit to Funic down in the bottom lane, and they have a gem up on the crystal man already, so Funic should die here. He's trying his best to at least get some trade out of this, but with that kill, and yeah, they get Funic, but that means they're going to trade a tier one tower away. And Navi can maybe, you know, TP down bottom and, and defend if they try to push into a tier 2. Or Navi can do, you know, what they want to do and push into a tier 2 tower. Yeah, they're going to actually try to force by it. Or TP's coming out from uh, Virtus Pro here in the tier 2 top. Or they'll try to trade, looks like. This is interesting. Yeah, they're going to well, try to trade because there's a fortification on the Radiant team, actually. Yeah, Vir uh, Virtus Pro has got the way better pushing power. And they're actually going to try to force Navi, ba Navi back. I mean... With the Bloodlust up on Illidan, the Treants up on Light of Heaven, there's no way that Navi is going to outpush Virtus Pro. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, now come the TP. Right. The tier 2 tower on the top lane will still drop, so that's good. And actually, G jumps himself in. He might be slightly... Uh, no, the Vortex is there. Well, uh, Vost is not going to teleport out, but now with G out of mana, perhaps Vost can make something happen. happen. Comes comes Light of Heaven, puts down a Sprout because he just shows that he can, I guess. Go oh, bottom lane. Puppy looking for Jotam. That's gonna be a kill, should be a kill. Then he is able to jump himself out at least, but Puppy Way made sure that they got at least something out of this. Illidan, he does not have a time lapse anymore, just only takes a little bit of harassment. That's exactly what G was trying to do in the top lane, except he didn't pull it off in a boast. Instead, they did the same thing down bottom, and Danny jumps in with a Dream Coil, stops Jotam from getting out of there, and grabs a kill on him, which is nice to secure at least one kill. Yeah. They clearly wanted to, but it's easier said than done to gank a Weaver, who's, by the way, looks like he's going for, I think, a BKB. He's definitely not going for a first item Desolator, at least I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't think he would be, because you want some sort of defensive item in, in any game, really, that you're playing as a Weaver, and, and if you're not going to go Link and Spin, the other only option is going to be a BKB, so so I imagine he'll pick that up, and then they're going to really try to be aggressive with that. Um, they already are trying to go for this tier 1 tower mid, and they're going to get it because they have Necro Creeps, and it's Necro Book 3, so they'll fortify this, but it's just to kind of push them back and try to trade, so tier 1 bottom might now be the next option for Na'Vi, and you can see everyone's heading top of Virtus Pro. I don't know what they're going to try to accomplish. G is called off a little bit, but his net worth is still very low. You look, he's actually the third lowest in the game right now, and that's not good for your mid player. And that is actually third lowest... Not just for his team, but for everybody, because everybody of Navi is higher than G at this point, which is saying something, considering that the towers are actually in favor of Virtus Pro. Well, now they're even again with the, the bottom tier one picked up as well. But they're, yeah, with them even again, it, it says a lot. We now also have got a hand of Midas still up on a Vos, who finds himself uh, maybe still a bit too much behind, and you know, if it's going to be a long game anyway, then he might as well. You know, Vos, you might be wanting to run here. He has an Aegis. Is he, is he really so prone on burning that down? I mean, Aegis is going to disappear, I guess, in one minute and a, cu and a couple of seconds. 
But it looks like he really well. wants to make sure it's gone. Oh, Puppy might be in some trouble, but he pops the nature's attendance and he's got level 4 untouchable. Is he invulnerable though? I don't think he is. He is going to make sure that G drops. That's going to be good. No TP out for him. Light of Heaven can't do anything either. Good luck trying to last hit Puppy. Well, actually, that's just what Illidan did. Soul Subject coming out. Illidan himself tracked up. Sugar Tusk to follow. No time lapse for him. Double kill for Funic. In the end, I mean, what looked to be a fast pickup on an Enchantress turned in on a 4 versus 1 in favor of Na'Vi. And on top of that, they keep their tower as well, which is probably a very big deal as well. It's, I can't believe that, actually, they, they were so prone on taking down that puppy that they were just right-clicking that in slow-mo. Yeah, I don't know if that was the right play for Virtus Pro to lose four heroes and then get only one in return, and that being Puppy, who, well, we already talked about Untouchable, plus he's getting Age 10. It's not the easiest hero to kill, yeah. so they should have known the rotations were coming. Havos had an Aegis, so he didn't care if he died or not. And then that you saw the time lapse not available for the Weaver. He got Shrieky Tossed in. There's more track kills going the way of Navi. They have a huge lead right now. And more kills going the way of Puppy and the way of Dendi and getting items. I mean, they've got almost a 10,000 gold lead and a 14,000 experience lead, which is really really saying something and Havos is starting to get farmed he picks up a light Midas I'm not sure when he got it it must have been a while ago because yeah, I haven't seen not it that, not that long ago I mentioned it when he was so, yeah. very low okay like when all right was yeah sorry I didn't see it uh, profit ulti we have a smoke up for Virtus Pro they also got themselves the bloodlust up on G let's see if he can make something happen with that he'll find Havos which is probably the best target for this but Havos might be able to turn us around never mind hello multicast Oh, That's it comes funny though. Like the track goes off. G should be able to zip himself out, and everybody else TP'd out. Wow, that was very quick escape from Virtus Pro. They knew they were gonna get ganked if they stuck around there. Good job. And yes, they can just take down a Vos every single time like that until he gets a BKB, which is very far away at this point. No, oh, yeah, especially if that keeps happening to him. I mean, how is he going to be able to farm in the jungle safely? He can't. He really has to play with his team. And Midas will do some work, some of the work. It'll, like, help him get there. But he needs a lot more farm and room to get that. So, um, Funnick's going to run right into Jotam. And Jotam may very well die here if Kuroki decides it. Yeah, it looks like they do. All right, rest in peace, Jotam. Nice, yep. Lincolns. And yes. I think that they saw them putting down that ward. So the central... There's a gem of truth side. The familiar should be able to scout this out if he just flies them like he saw them placing it. This is a very good position for a ward, though. Yeah. He checks it, but he couldn't find it. Nicely done. Tears of Tower still getting split push. I guess that's the... That's the troublesome side, as I already mentioned. The split pushing of Verge Pro is still quite heavy. And they should be able to pick up a tier 2 tower because of that as well. We do see a, quite of a big hay train going the, to the top lane though. They really want to take down G, but G is still quite happy on mana. They need an initiation from Poppy to jump in and, and silence him. So we'll see. Uh, the track will go on. Funic just with some harassment. But the zip indeed is there. No familiar disabled. The TP is there. Shuriken Toss? It's in time! Oh, it's not in time. Oh, that's flying time. It is still flying towards G though. As Nature's Prophet goes... To Why was he there? Was he still there? I, really I didn't see don't him. know. I d I think he might have just came up there for whatever reason. I, I yeah, I don't know why he came back. If he did, either way, that's a kill that gives Kuroki his Aghanim scepter, yeah. which is kind of a big item if you think about it. I mean, three birds compared to two plus, just yeah, they're just good. So yeah, that's that's a big item. That's a big deal, which means more damage for Kuroki. And anytime you can have that, it's really nice. He already has his mech. Aghanim scepter is probably close to being done for Puppy, if not altogether. In fact, it is. I didn't notice it last time, but it is, and. Yeah, I mean, really, Virtus Pro has no business being in this game, but they are because of the split push from the Nature's Prophet. Light of Heaven is doing his damnedest to make this game as annoying as possible for Na'Vi. Mm -hmm. They still have a huge lead for Na'Vi, and, and despite almost losing all of their towers, I mean, like, it doesn't matter. They don't really care. They're still farming away, and Hoboist is getting some more room to farm. Luckily for him, the wave is back at his base, so he'll be able to pick up his Mithril Hammer at the very... Uh, just kidding, that's a full BKB. Sorry, I don't know where that came from, but I thought it was very far away. Apparently it's I not. I so nice. too, but I guess the most if it was in the courier i didn't check the courier yeah i i guess that's our fault but at the same time though now that he has that this changes the complexion of the game a whole lot because they're kind of playing behind the entire time or just kind of you know sort of defensive if you'd call it. but with that they could be a lot more aggressive here and they could find easy kills and easy fights going their way there's really nothing that they can do now on Virtus pro side if navi wants to push in as five they'll win a fight hands down so yeah, I think maybe they want to wait for the next Roshan. It's going to be a bit less than one minute before it's up again. We already have Navi gathering up for it. Seeing if they There's a gem of Kuroki. G needs to be very careful here. They're lucky Visage yeah. isn't around, otherwise he'd die. Like, he... I don't know. He, 
He's gonna TP out smartly, but like yeah. that's questionable. And he is, by the way, almost done with the zombie KB. Well, I say almost, he needs a full mental hammer. But he, at least he's getting next items because he's been sitting on that overclock for a long time. Wow, that's a long zip to try and take down a puppy that they've already tried to take down once. Gee, now he's out of mana. Well, good luck with that, familiar. What is he doing? One stun coming out, Bloodlust helping G run faster. Now all of a sudden, Jotam slowed down. Boom, your dead soul assumption will finish him off. That's on on the hands of G. That The blood of Jotam is on the hands of D or G. Like, no doubt about it. Yeah, I'm sure Jotam's yelling at him. Probably like in some sort of Skype or something. Just like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you flying in, not having enough mana to do anything, and then flying out and leaving me to die? Because Jotam Vistage from there is like I talked about. Do a lot of damage, therefore Jotam dies really easy because he's kind of squishy top lane. Yeah, Golden there's already up. Hex up. Time lapse is still going to be there, but the Dream Coil instantly is there. He turns on his BKB, tries to teleport himself out, and there's not going to be enough damage to take him down before. And what's close, though? I think with one more Denada, maybe. Tower goes down, uh, gets the knight, nicely done. And Chandra's in the meantime taken down a tier two, top, tier two middle. So overall, a good trade for Navi for sure. And I mean, they forced out the time lapse, and a, more importantly, a BKB charge because that was actually the first BKB that Weaver used, the first BKB charge that he used. Yeah, the biggest one going now for Illidan. And you know, I think Dendi actually misplayed. I think he right clicked a creep when he, after he time lapsed. So one more right click from Dendi. Uh, would have done the job there. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I, I'm pretty sure Denny right clicked something else other than Illidan there, so Illidan could have died, but mid lane, there seems to be a little bit of an overextension with Navi. They're playing very aggressively, and Virtus Pro is not going to punish this, surprisingly enough. Havost is here as well, and they could try to fight with Havost. Illidan seems to know something's happening right now, and he'll try to back off. His time lapse should be up. Yeah, it is, so he's fine. And just um, BKB that he'll he can't leave. rely on. Yeah, that's true though. He doesn't have that BKB, but Funic with those Lincoln's free. He actually has 3,000 gold in the bank. I'm not sure what his next item is. Um, I would have said SMY if it were earlier, but he doesn't need to go for that now. As it's a little bit late for that, I think. It's a big item. Maybe even a Desolator because no one has it yet, I don't think. So yeah. just get armor reduction. Why not? A uh, Desolator or Assault Cross? I mean, Auras, please. Please do yeah, it. Yeah, Auras would work too. Like a Vlad's would be nice oh, if Vlad's they don't have it yet. Yeah, all that extra armor. Looks like they don't. Geef. Well, Funic is going to buy something. Or not. I was thinking he was gonna. He was walking to the shop. He still walked to the shop. Doesn't buy anything. Buy something, funny. He anyway. can't decide. He's just like, I don't know. I'm still shopping. I'm browsing. Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, he did oh buy something. Oh my god, right Luna. Now. Luna has a point booster. What? What is this game? He's going for an Aghanim Scepter. That's interesting. I haven't seen that. It's a good yet. way to describe it. Well, they they want to have Aghanim Scepters for everybody because I mean I think that's that's. Well, not I think. I know that's because of Funic. Funic is allowing all these supports to go for all these luxury items because his track kills just give the support so much more gold. Look at the difference in net worth between the supports of Virtus Pro sitting at 3.2k gold approximately compared to Navi support around the 10k. There is an immense difference there. That is track kills most of all and of course normal kills as well because you know it is 12 to 25. But it is allowing Puppy to get an Aghanim Scepter. I mean, Aghanim Scepter on Visage already is already sitting on 1700 gold again. And, I mean, yeah, why not? Um, Bounty Hunter for Sanji Yasha, he'll still do that. And why not more Aghanim Scepters? I mean, you want to have three in a game, you know? Radiance three is better than two. Under attack. Yeah, it really is. I guess, I mean, if you're just following simple mathematics, then yes, absolutely. But, like, you mentioned how track kills are a big deal. Oh. Oh, like, wow. Dream Coil up on two, but they don't really go in on it just yet. They do force out a time lapse up on Illidan. In comes Kuroki with the stun. He'll go down. The mechanism still used. Doesn't matter. He'll not be able to focus fully up on his birds as Arsard. Puppy chasing him down. That's going to be killed. Gem on the floor with that as well. Illidan, though, looks for Puppy. Puppy's nature attendants are keeping him alive, and he will be okay. It is going to be the Storm Spear that dies afterwards. Okay, that Eclipse might have just been a bit overkill for that. Well, never mind. I wasn't. I it wasn't overkill. That is. Uh, is it was that an ag that was there was an Aghanim scepter eclipse that lasted for ages. Yeah, it's got a lot of bounces. It's pretty good. It's pretty nice. It, it increases does, uh, duration. Duration is it does does it show properly? Like, is it five point four seconds now, or is it like longer now with the Aghanim still? Scepter duration six point six, according to the thing. Oh, and yeah, then I, I read it wrong. Six point. That's insane. They just, by the way, completely obliterated Virtus Pro. They might have lost a visit for it, but as said, his birds are, are his birds have a more impact than he has right now. So Navi, mm -hmm. with that fight, they should be able to take the tower and they take the racks as well. I think, unless there's going to be some buybacks. Oh, Arsard. 
Really? Really? Yeah, that's not his best move there. Hobo still has his BKB, by the way, and the rest of the Navi are getting here, including the Enchantress, who can push down waves if she's got some creeps, but she doesn't. Storm Spirit's gonna go ahead and kill both his Aegis, but I'm sure he doesn't really care about that. Yeah, well, he does, I mean... Anyway. No, he's full on yeah, he needs to use again. it. Yay! Yeah, but, like, at the same time, I don't know if they want to fight without an Aegis. No, I don't know if they want to try to push in yet. It might be too early here. They might want to wait for the next Roshan, which will be a long time, actually. Yeah. Um, but still, they, they can if they want to. They don't have to deal with Arsard, obviously, for another 10 seconds. But it's going to be tough. They have to get another fight on the high ground here, which they can definitely do once their ults are back up. The only one they don't have is Vost, and, uh, well, that's nice, but not necessarily 100% needed. I think they should Look take down this too. There's no fortification. Yeah, it's dying very quickly. Yeah, so machine with guns. Agonist, the range familiar. of Enchantress is just so long. Oh, that is insane, and he's now got, oh, yeah, Jotam, two, two impetuses, and he's already kind of forced back to base, so that Ogre Magi is uh, kind of sad. He's also not really getting that many crits, or multicast, by the way. Not really all that lucky. Not as lucky, yeah. Really, just not, not his day today, apparently. Nope. Mechanism will keep them up with the Bouncing Blades. These Rex will file very fast, and actually Enchantress... We'll pick up the Crystal Maiden still as well. Jotam still b forced back. I mean, that's just a bouncing blaze forcing them back. This is... This is Luna for you. I mean, she'll just do that. That's without, like, any sort of damaging items, too. That's just Moonglaive damage and regular right-click damage being enough. So that's kind of disgusting when you think about it. Puppy, like, threw, like, two impetuses on Impetai, I guess, on the Crystal Maiden, and she just dropped. So yeah. also, that's kind of an issue, too. So... G jumps himself in, goes for Puppy as well, really wanting to have him dead. It looks like he is successful with that, but at the same time, Ogre Magi goes down, so a one for one trade. They are still able to track up Illidan, and with the Bouncing Blades, apparently Ill uh, Puppy being dead, they don't really care about that. They'll just care about buildings. Funnick is being pinked next. Funnick, who after Jasha seems to be going for a Butterfly, they jump in, they go on Vos, though. G is the one to get Hex up, he's one big pig. He'll die, Illidan will be next, tracked up before he dies as well, more gold going away of Navi. And right now, with only one hero left alive, I am thinking this might just be game. Yeah, well, I Light of Heaven tried his best to split push here, and he's gonna continue to do it. Uh, he actually cancelled his TP as they're just ganking him in the well, so that's interesting. Uh... Yeah, apparently it's time for fountain farming. And it actually cost the life of Dendi and of, and of Host. I mean, they can't go for to bottom lane just yet. It is just an impossible funnick. Teleporting out, but not able to. Well, that's three kills being given away to Virx Pro, and apparently they still feel like they have a chance, so they're not backing off. Oh, look at that! More Aghanim Septai! Is it also so? Like Scepters, Septai? No? Yes? Scepters. Damn Scepters, it. I believe there's no... It's not... It's not one of those crazy ones. That's a shame. I believe... I mean, I might be wrong. I don't... I, who knows? I think it's Scepters, but, uh... <laughs> what? No, well, l listen, Nahaz, I'm gonna stop you right there, buddy. And I'm gonna let you know that if we're considering Pro Dota, we're also considering MLG Pro Columbus Qualifiers, okay? Let's, let's take it back a little bit. There was a team called Take 5, I'm sure you all remember them very, very well. And, uh, there's a guy named Mason who played for Take 5, which was Demon and, and Arteezy's team, by the way. And uh, he built Aghanim's Refresher Luna. So, just saying, that stat's incorrect. Just throwing that out there. Okay, good. I suppose he's just copying them. He really is. Mason's a trendsetter, guys. Yep. Inventive There's like five Mason. people in this it's chat that get that thing. reference. Oh, gee, what are you doing? We really want to go for a Vose, but... Oh, he can actually multicast! Yes! Down into the deep. Well, I was happy with the multicast, but Luna dies, and this time can't buy back because he did do buy he did buy back previous time, I believe. So, yeah, so that's going to be a big win for Virtus Pro, and I mean they're keeping themselves in the game. They've been able to take down a complete set of racks during that fight earlier on because the split push of Nature's Prophet came in, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's one set of racks, it's two set of racks. I'm pretty sure Navi's like, are you serious? They're they're a little frustrated and flustered, if you will. Is there buyback? Uh, no. no for, no, hmm. so for nobody, so that's, Navi, they could still throw this. That's not good, actually. Yeah, they could definitely throw this pretty hard. BKB is wasted, though. Uh, but they're gonna try to walk in. They're all bloodlusted, so, I mean, they might be able to take this down. They're gonna go straight for the tier 4s. This is... crazy. I don't know if they if can it, do this, If though, it cause... works, we're gonna call them geniuses, so we'll see. If it works, then that fortification comes out, so at least that's... Funnick, where's your TP? 
Fortnite doesn't have a TP. Well, they don't. Well, they, uh, if they doesn't find matter. It looks like. Oh, they find Arsart. That's something. In the meantime, Dandy is still going for further forward. He's still. Uh, well, he actually has a hex. If he can find someone, that will be great. But he, he won't, but you have a blink in two seconds. Blinken needs a vision, and so he gets Light of Heaven and dragged up because Funny comes around the corner. Light of Heaven does still have a teleport, but no chance to put it out. And that means that there's going to be two extra kills going away with Navi, and now there's actually a buyback again. Puppy has one. Yay. Dyer's middle tower is yeah, tower. <laughs> there's one buyback in the game, and if Puppy dies, he'll be the only one available yeah. to do it, but... <laughs> Roche is actually going to spawn in about 10 to 20 seconds, so that'll be nice for them to take if they want it. Elden's trying to do his darndest to split push, but Dendi and the rest of them are like, no, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, so... They're going to try to chase Elden down. If they can get a track off, he'll be... No, they can't get him, sadly. No, but blink, funny... Funny blink the wrong way. Shogun Toss? No. Yeah, that it was like the it was like one of the first rounds, and Take Five got disqualified after that game. So very well, and also the ticket that game wasn't ticketed. That was before the ticketed game started happening, actually. So that's probably why it's not showing up in the Haas. Also important to note in that game, Mason also built Shaka, and so that was a Ethereal Blade, Aghanim's Refresher, Luna. Uh, yeah, they won the game. Also, he built a Radiance too, but that's not important. Oh, Puppy might be in some trouble. Luckily, he has a buyback. He might be forced to use it. Phonic in the meantime, he'll be in some trouble. He actually, Eclipse comes in. Avos is gonna try and take this one with the Agonins. Eclipse Refresher. Let's see how many kills they get. They get Arsar, they get Light of Heaven. That's three dead, four or one. And the buyback on Puppy indeed helping. Jotam can TP out. It will be a Avos up in that one as well. That is gonna be a double kill Kuroki. Four dead on the side of Virtus Pro. And they do not have buyback. Well, actually, Ogre has buyback. But he is just a solo ogre. Poor ogre. Poor That's ogre. all he is. Just a solo ogre. Hmm. Well, Weaver is, uh, is still alive as well, but he's also just by himself. I'm not sure where Vos is going. Just pushing the rest of the lanes out. I'm figuring, you know, maybe he wants to just t take down the uh, last set of racks. But apparently they're just walking forward, going for the tier 4s. Who cares? Oh, they, the, no, they didn't pick up the tier 2 tower. because Tier 2, yeah, that's there. why they're just going for the tier 4. They don't care about the racks enough. They just want to finish this game and move on. And I don't blame them either. Virtus Pro is actually putting up a good fight, but still, like, yeah. they're going to lose at least one tier 4. Yeah, and I would oh say don't my. fountain dive this because we just saw the risk of doing that. Elden will live. Another tier 4 will die, a Vos this time not caring about kills, this is uh, one of the first times that that happens, he just kill cares about buildings. In comes the, the zip, G goes for Phonic, Phonic might actually die here, he will get picked up, there we go, it's Ogre Magi that dies in return of him, time lapse of Elden, he'll be kept safe, but Puppy, boom, you're dead, double kill for Puppy, and this should be... The throne, this is game. The GG called out. Navi will win themselves the Navi second victory. game that they have today. They will be having another game later tonight, though. They'll be up against QPAD, Red Pandas. But first, we are going to see a game featuring Sigma and the retry, I believe. And let's just... Yes, I have that correct. Wow, nice for me. So Sigma International taking on the retry. That will be our fourth game of the day. A day where we see six games in total. So Sigma versus the retry. Navi QPAT. And as last game of the day, we have Flipside Russia taken on Alliance. So stick with us. We'll be right back. We are actually a couple of minutes ahead of time. So we might... will have... Well, we'll have another short break before the next game starts. And um, hope to see you all in about seven minutes time. Although you'll see me already in 13 seconds. That's how it works.